Hello, Shakespeare fans. It's Saturday, and I have a few moments uh, to do a little bit of Shakespeare with you. Uh, we uh, are doing, obviously, Romeo and Juliet, and we're doing Act 3, Scene 2. So uh, what has happened just now, uh, just before the scene, is that Romeo and Juliet have been married. Um, the plan is for them to get married and then split up so no one sees them together. Juliet to go back home and go into her bedroom and, uh, and the nurse to go get a ladder so they can throw it out her bedroom window and Romeo will wait for nightfall and climb up the ladder and they can, um, they can uh, <laughs> do what married people do on their honeymoon. Um, anyway, uh, unfortunately, uh, Romeo gets into a fight. Uh, and he comes upon a scene where uh, his one of his best friends, Mercutio, has just been killed by Tybalt. And uh, in a rage, he fights Tybalt and wins, which means he's uh, killed Tybalt. And the prince comes in and uh, to save, uh, to bring peace back to the streets, he says that Romeo is banished. And he needs to run away from Verona and never come back. And if he's ever seen in Verona again, he'll be put to death. So, uh, we see in this scene, Juliet, who doesn't know any of that, and only knows that she has just been married and is very much in love and is watching the sun very slowly creep across the sky and she's waiting for nightfall. And she says, Gallop apace, you fiery-footed steeds toward Phoebus's lodging. Such a wagoneer as Phaeton would whip you to the west and bring in cloudy night immediately. Spread thy close curtain, love performing night, that runaway's eyes may wink, and Romeo leap to these arms, untalked of and unseen. Lovers can see to do their amorous rites by their own beauties, or if love be blind, it best agrees with the night. Come, civil night, thou sober suited matron, all in black. And learn me how to lose a winning match played for a pair of stainless maidenhoods. Hood my unmanned blood, baiting in my cheeks with thy black mantle till strange love doth grow bold. Think, true love, acted simple modesty. Come, night, come, Romeo, come thou day in night, for thou wilt lie upon the wings of night whiter than new snow upon a raven's back. Come, gentle night, come, loving, black-browed night, give me my Romeo, and when I shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars, and he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and pay no, and pay no worship to the garish sun. Oh, I have bought the mansion of a love, but not possessed it, and though I am sold, not yet enjoyed. So tedious is this day, as is the night before some festival to an impatient child that hath new robes and may not wear them. Oh, here comes my nurse. So, just, just, just glorious, just glorious. Um, a wonderful phrase in there. Um, Come civil night, thou sober-suited matron, all in black, and learn me, teach me, learn me how to lose a winning match played for a pair of stainless maidenhoods. So come night and teach me how to have a match with Romeo, um, a game, a contest, I guess, where we, we win love, we win each other, we win happiness by losing our virginity. And um, so we lose and we win at the same time. Um, and I just, you know, they're both, they're both so young, they're both virgins. Um, uh, and, uh, there's just a lot of, a lot of, she's like, like, she's, you know, they're, they're, she's talking about the sun, you know, and fiery footed steeds, uh, is all about, you know, uh, the Greek kind of thought that the sun is, is actually a shining golden chariot that is being drawn by horses, which are basically on fire. Um, and that, that, uh, it would be Apollo in Greece, I think, and then Phoebus in the Roman 
Pantheon? Anyway, um, uh, and there's a great little note here. She's, she's like, you know, Phoebus is lodging, so, so get going, guys. But if Phaeton were in the chariot, driving the chariot, Phaeton being Phoebus's son, who lost control of the horses and had to be killed by Jupiter. <laughs> Jupiter also being Zeus. It's confusing because like the Romans basically took all of the religion of the Greeks and the only thing they changed is all the names. They're like, we thought of it. Anyway, um, the nurse comes in and she is freaked out. And she's like, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Oh my God, my heart is broken, he's dead. And Juliet is like, oh, who, who's dead? Romeo's dead, oh my God. No, my heart, my heart. And, um, and the nurse is like, oh, I saw his body. It was so horrible. There was gore and viscera just spilling out of him. He was white as snow. It was horrifying. And Julia's like, oh, my Romeo is dead. It's horrible. And the nurse says, no, no, not, not Romeo. Tybalt is dead. And, and, and Julia's like, Tybalt is dead? Oh, my God, my cousin Tybalt is dead? Oh, no. And she's heartbroken because apparently Tybalt, although he is very good with the sword, is also very good as a cousin and a very loving member of the family over there. Uh, and she's like, who killed him? And, and the nurse is like, Romeo did. At which point, Juliet is like, how, what? How could I have been fooled by Romeo? How can he be so evil when he's so beautiful? Um, and she's just bouncing off the walls. And finally, she kind of, kind of comes to the position of, you know what? They got in a fight. We see this all the time. Tybalt was trying to kill Romeo. Romeo was trying to kill Tybalt. I guess I'm happy that it turned out that way. I'm guess I'm I'm, I'm glad that my husband has survived, even if it is that Tybalt died. Um. And the nurse uh, says, "Okay, I'll help you. I am going to go find Romeo, and I will bring him to your chamber, so you guys can have your wedding." And uh, again, I fall in love with the nurse again, who, um, even though her heart is broken over the loss of Tybalt, her family member who she loves dearly, loved dearly, she is going to try to get these two people together. Uh, and I just think it's a heartbreaking scene. I think, you know, you're just seeing these two people in such deep ambivalence and just being torn apart by their grief for the loss of their family member uh, and by their hope for something good, something loving that might be able still to happen if they can find Romeo. Uh, but it's, you know, we've, Shakespeare has had us fall in love with these two characters and now we're seeing them just getting grinded uh, by the society that they live in. Uh, and uh, we're going to go a bit downhill from there, I'm afraid. Okay, bye-bye.